Mr Singer, welcome to the studio. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, um, thank you. You've represented Ramsey as an MHK uh, twice. You've been an MLC as well. You just can't leave this politics business alone, can you? You're back again. Uh, yes, and there's a, I, didn't, I didn't know that I would be, uh, but there are reasons for it. Um, because, first of all, I think we're having problems, uh, uh, certainly with the suggestion that we have this multi-mega marina in, in Ramsey, which I am totally against. So was that the moment you had your Damascus syndrome and said, I've got to get back in and do something about this? Well, it, well, it, well it, to me, it, it's sort of, there was original proposal and I wasn't involved in politics and I thought, this is not the right thing for Ramsey. But then it seems to have re-emerged uh, and it's quite apparent that my, views, my view is, is, is certainly reflected by a lot of people in Ramsey. And I felt that I really had to stand up and say, I oppose this. Enough people to get you uh, elected. No, 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 you're nothing. not a single issue candidate. No, you, no, no. The impression no, no, no. is given that you may be a single issue candidate. No, absolutely not, because there are things that have to be done in Ramsey and there's great national issues. And I've got experience, John, uh, in, as you say, in Tinwald, uh, on speaking on these issues. I believe I've got the experience and I believe that I can stand up to, to, to put forward policies and to put forward Ramsey as well. Well, let's just have a look at the marina then. Apart from the fact the beach is going to be built upon, what other objections do you have? Well, it's not. It's an overall um, system that's going to be changed in Ramsey. First of all, uh, we're going to lose the character of Ramsey. We're going to lose its natural beauty. We're going to possibly lose the na nature reserve, which is very, very important uh, with, with us being a biosphere uh, recognised uh, island. Um, yes, we are going to lose the beach uh, as, a as a recreation area. And we're going to, and if this was to come forward, it would subject the town to years of disturbance and upset. Um, the work would take literally years because the um, policy that the developers seem to have is that they have to raise the money before they can invest it into the uh, marina. So they've got 400 berths and from what I hear from them and what they say, they need, they want to rent out those berths 25 to 30 years in advance. They want to build between 150 and 200 houses and they have to sell these houses in order to raise the cash. They say they can build them in two years. But honestly, John, in my view, this is not, uh, it's not the Monaco. It's not the Costa del Sol. This is the Irish Sea. Yeah, yeah, the Irish Sea in which people come to the island, apparently, and just turn around without actually staying in the town because there's nowhere to berth. Uh, they would do it if there were more berths there. Fine, that's one person. What I would support, John, is a feasibility study in the inner, the old harbour, because I think that would mean that there would be realistic and, and uh, positive regeneration in Ramsey. So a marina inside the, the harbour at the moment is what you would you'd inside say? The old, the inside old, the old um, harbour. Yeah, I, I the think that would structure. be great for regeneration. And this person who you say is going back and forth across the Irish Sea. He, uh, he wasn't the only person going back and forth. There were quite <laughs> well, a few people from Ireland. Good. Who's going to be coming in the middle of the winter? The place will be dead. Who's going to be in? Who's going to be in the in the houses? Well, let's just put that issue to one side. Another issue that you attempted to get elected on and ma narrowly missed out was Ramsey Cottage Hospital. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you were unhappy that it didn't have twenty-four hour services there. Oh. What's your present view of Ramsey Cottage Hospital? The present view of Ramsey Cottage Hospital that we're in a brilliant position. I've been chairman now for the League You're of Friends. You're the friends of Ramsey Cottage friends, Hospital. Yeah, League of Friends of Ramsey Cottage Hospital now for twenty-four years, and we have. It has been a fight. There have been uh, attempts by people in Douglas who wanted to change to close the hospital, uh, but we've really um, stuck to the task. We've spent well over a million and a has half. Has that really pounds. been on the cards? Closing the hospital? It was in the past. It was in the past. A long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. But even now, I mean, we've put a, um, equipment into the in, into the hospital, the early sense system which is world-breaking equipment. You know, it's world-breaking, the system. And uh, because it's a non-contact, um, like, um, non-contact pad that goes under the 
uh, on the, under the mattress, doesn't contact their patient and monitors them 24 hours a day. But a group of supporters is having to do this. Do you think the government should the actually go- provide this? Well, the government can't afford it. The government can't afford it. So th- these are the things that we do for the, for the hospital. Um, and we've just h- had an attempt by certain people to say they want to get rid of it. It costs us a quarter of a million pounds and they've come back with arguments that were dismissed when we first put it in. But fortunately, we've had the support of Manx, the new Manx care, Teresa Cope, who has done an indep- who had an independent review, and they say it's fantastic. What, why do they want to get rid of it? The cost? Um, they've got um, their own agenda. Got well, their own what agenda. is that agenda? That you, you, I mean, getting rid of uh, up-to-date equipment seems oh, seems unusual. We couldn't believe it. Well, there were people who opposed it in the first place. There was another system that they put into the hospital. That was their baby. They thought it would interfere with it. So they thought there's a better system they could put in. No, they thought that they their system is a totally different system, works a totally different way. Our system monitors people 24 hours a day when they're in bed, when they're sitting on a chair out of bed, it monitors them through the night and it shows a build-up for things like heart attack, stroke, sepsis, uh, and it keeps the staff monitored the You think your system's the better system? No, our system is an addition system which is all over the States, it's all over Europe, but it's an expensive system. The health service couldn't uh, couldn't afford it. Well, let's but, just just leave that to one side. We've dealt with it for, for quite length. But um, the shopping street in Par in in Ramsey Parliament Street, we just heard. Obviously, a business has decided to close down Bar Logo, which was quite a, a modern. Well, it was a very modern uh, yeah. thing. Have you been in to chat to them to find out why uh, exactly they they think that it's not no, worth carrying on? I've not been. I've not been in to chat to them. But no, that'd be but, a good idea. To talk to them and say. Why, why are you but going? They, 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 I think they, they link it to the lack of business and the and COVID. Um, but what we need to do, and what I want to see done, is I need we want to get government incentives to bring businesses to Ramsey, and that they don't stay in Douglas and they don't go down the. But south. wouldn't businesses come to Ramsey if they saw an um, opportunity there? Wouldn't they come there already if they saw an there opportunity? Are new, there are new businesses opening in Ramsey. W- w- there's always been a turnover of businesses, and over the years that I've been Ramsey, we've had good times and we've had bad times. But we need to bring the jobs to Ramsey. We need, for example, to make sure that we keep all the parking, which attracts people to Ramsey, um, and the the uh, infrastructure needs attention, for example, the roads and the pavements, which are quite awful. Well, you've had a places. revamp of Parliament Street all the way up along. We have, to but the there are other areas, there's Parliament Street, there's other areas in the town that are, are, are really bad, and this needs to be done. There's also, I mean, I'm on the, there's other things I need, I need to be tackling as well. For example, I'm, quite a lot of people are saying to me they can't get access to the doctors. Uh, for various reasons, I can't get through to doctors, so that needs to be talked about. And they, you talked about that in, I think, 2016 and 2011, Nothing, saying no. better accessibility to doctors. So that's still there. The problem's still there. Uh, yet it seems it seems at the moment because, leading from COVID, they don't seem to have gone back to the system where you can ring up and you can get directly get an appointment with a doctor. Now, you, there's two sitting MHKs. They're both sitting again. Yep. Uh, you're standing as well. Yep. Uh, I mean, you said you were standing initially because there's no one else standing now. There's quite a few. Yep. Uh, but what have the two that are standing done wrong that you feel you can do better? <laughs> I, I, well, I believe that I can do better uh, because I've got the experience. I'm not... I, yeah, but but I'm in not, what, what areas? Well, what, what, what have they done wrong? They must have done something that you, that you thought, that, that's not good. That, that, no, I, I believe that I can add to, to government with my experience. There's lots of things that need to be done that haven't been done. And I'm not saying, I can't say this is their fault, that isn't their fault. But you've got things like um, the, the mental health is still a, a, a Cinderella Yeah, it's something project. you brought up before as well, yeah, mental well, health, well, isn't uh, it? Yeah. And, that, and that, is not, that, is, that needs to be improved. There's been the failure to attract new businesses and Jobs to the Isle of Man. Um, we've got um, the, the absolute waste of money and disastrous decisions uh, by government costing the taxpayer uh, for a fortune due to inept leadership. Well, well let's cover, for, for instance, I think we know where you're heading, but for instance. Well, there's four. There's the Liverpool Sea Terminal, Douglas Promenade, the Laxey situation, 
The, the flooding. Uh, the flooding, which has cost, cost, I believe, £22 million. Pounds. Where did that, where does that cost come from? Um, what, what were the mistakes that were made? Let's just go to the, the, the Liverpool ferry. I presume you think that we're heading towards £50 million now. That's rather too expensive. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's crept, hasn't it? Uh, I think it started off at 18, did it? Then it went to 28, then it's 38. I think originally when it was mooted by... Was it uh, six? I think it was down in single figures. Yeah, I, I think, think it was originally. six and it wasn't going to cost government anything uh, at all. Um, and then, of course, we've just had the situation where they've come back again and asked Tinwald for 13. 13.8 million. 13.8 million, which Tinwald has refused. But what could you do about that? Because well, you'd be well, on the sidelines as a backbencher. You could stop whatever's going on in infrastructure, I suppose. It depends what position. It depends if you're given a position or not. But of course, you can talk against it because we've got, an opt- we've got two lose lose options here. It's going, the, this 13.8 will go to the next Tinwald. Uh, which brings you up to 52. I understand from what I uh, talked to people that that could be a final figure of six over 60 million. Six oh, six million. Six oh, yes. Yeah, where, where have you got that from? So I've been speaking to people in government who've been They, they in say that's the figure. So. so it could go from 52. It could end up at over 60. Uh, but then we've got to look at what's happened in, at the moment in Liverpool. All they've done is prepare the site, which if that was to be resold, put on the market would we'll probably bring maybe five or six million but I understand that the government has already committed and paid over 20 million so what do you do do you do you say commit yourself to 60 million or do you walk away and lose maybe 15 16 million it's a lose-lose situation it seems an apposite moment to move on to the economy um, I was uh, speaking to the Treasury Minister uh, and he says obviously we've got reserves he's perfectly content with how we are riding the COVID storm. What, what's your view of that? <laughs> well, the Treasury Minister, you know the saying, he would say that, wouldn't he? Um, he says we've got, oh, it's told, we're told that the Treasury has 1.8 billion. But much of that is tied up in funds, like the National Insurance Fund, which is paying the pensions, and paying the, the, the health and, and the investments. And I, I understand from what I hear that we've probably got no more than three to four hundred million in fluid reserves. But the other stuff is earning money, presumably. You can't just is, have all is, the money it, sitting it around is, is, waiting for a rainy no, day, can you? Of course not, but you don't, you don't want either. You don't want to cash that in. But if you've only got three to four hundred million and a lot of money is coming out, unfortunately, because of the COVID situation, Hundreds of millions, basically, and we don't know how how long that's going to go on. We've really got to take action to increase our tax receipts. Because if we don't increase our tax how? receipts... How do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to attract new business, new investment to the island. The problem has been, uh, over the last few years, as I see it, has been a lack of business sense in government and a culture which is so risk-averse that serious potential investors, and I've got experience of bringing people across, they've thrown their hands in the air saying, we can't deal with this. They're trying to deal with the government, they're trying to deal with the FSA, and all they find are obstacles placed in the way. And what they're doing uh, is is they're going to places like Guernsey, and they're going to Wales. Guernsey have got a chief minister who is very business orientated, and when they, when when companies go to Guernsey, it's how can we help you? There's somebody there to help them find premises, to find property, to find, uh, to get work permits. And that's why we need here a complete reversal in government attitude by ensuring we have civil servants with proven business experience in the critical economic development This is what the Department for Enterprise is for, isn't it? Yes, uh, uh, definitely. Is is it not doing the job then? I I don't think it's done the job in the last last five years. We've not been getting the, the reasons I've said. People have been walking away. So we do need people with proven business experience in the critical economic development positions who, who can then demonstrate confidence and assurance to prospective investors that their aims and potentials are understood. Because, as I say, without a strong economy and the creation of new and full-time jobs and opportunities to bring an increase in tax receipts, there'll be no money for health and infrastructure development. So we need to build up our reserves. We also 
need to critically review every department's spending plans um, before we uh, before we start dreaming of any wish lists. You just mentioned health there. Obviously, it's an area that you've been close to in your working career, yes. uh, running a chemist, etc. Yeah. Uh, the new system uh, for health uh, care, Manx Care. Uh, uh, a, is that working, do you think? Uh, do you think it's a good idea? Well, I think that we what we did have was a failing service. And I've, we've, I've had experience of this working with Manx Care, with Ramsey Cottage Hospital. Um, and I certainly think that it has been a positive step to pass it on to uh, Manx Care, which is like a, a statutory board, um, because they are open. Knowing the Theresa Cope, the peers who's... You seem impressed by her. Pardon? You, you seem impressed I by her. I am impressed by her because she's got a lot of experience. She seems to have a, a vision for the future. She's, work, she's working now on the reduction of... Uh, waiting list, but of course she came here. She looked at the at the at the finance. She said, "I can't deal with this. You can't give me this job. I need more. I need more money." But I think that she's uh, that she's shall we say got her head screwed on right. Well, was this made public? This her, her view, this view of hers. I think so. I think I think it came that, that she needed that but they, they needed they needed more money. Um, but I think that in the right way that they, they have open meetings the public can go to their meetings um and we did have management support with the health service which i believe was abysmal we had a chief executive who never who was living off island i mean you can't you can't really from my view it's be been put down on. to covid in quite a few instances because uh, they can't come back and forth they'd have to um, isolate well shall we say Theresa cope moved across here with a family and is living on the island so, so are you saying that someone in that sort of position should live on the island? I, I think so, because for, for the every day-to-day -day conversations, you can't do all this on, on uh, Zoom. Um, so I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, um, that the new Manx Care will bring a great improvement to our health service. Let's just move on to climate change. You mentioned Laxey and the flooding there. Obviously, it takes a lot of money to stop nature doing what nature feels at the moment it should be doing. Is the island going in the right direction? We've just got a consultation going, asking people what should we do via climate change. It, it has been said, perhaps, we, we, with the current report, we should just go ahead and start doing things. What's your view? I, I You know, the, John, there are... Uh, what my, my view is that it should be, from the island, um, a measured response to climate change. By that, I mean, there are differing, differing views as to the cause of climate change, we can't deny what we can see with our own eyes. Are you a sceptic? No, 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 no. We can't, we can't deny what we can see with our own eyes. But the Isle of Man can play its part in mitigating the effects of uh, the, the rise in the sea levels, adapting to energy saving, reducing our carbon footprint within an affordable budget. We do seem to be able to talk the talk at the moment. We that's don't why seem to be walking the walk that's yet. Why I'm, that's why I'm saying within an affordable budget. Because we can't demands are made we need to do this we need to do this that can we afford it um, so b the general public can play an important part in doing their bit to implement policies that um, are going to reduce our carbon footprint. Some would say even if we can't afford it we have to do something Sh otherwise. Shall we, shall, we take an, let, shall we take an example of say um, elect having been told by 1918, 1920, 30, 20, uh, 2030 that we all have to have electric cars. Um, that to me is not possible. The price of car, electric cars, they are very expensive. There's a limit, to, for example, to the number of batteries it can be made because of uh, uh, the, lithium. The, lithium. Um, so, and also there's going to be a problem by 2030 that the current electric cars their batteries are going to be worn out. There's no w real way of, of disposing it of them. Um, they'll have to be sent off the island, and the disposing will be a heavy carbon footprint. So we have to be we have to have a common sense here because if you look at lithium li lithium deposits, this is, you know, this is something you may not know. The largest lithium deposits are in Chile, followed by Bolivia, followed by uh, Australia and Afghanistan. And, and Af yeah, Af that's what I was going to say. We're not going to get the lithium very easily out of Af Afghanistan. So again, this is what I'm saying. We have to be very 
um, measured in our response. I mean, it's great the government's saying all new houses have got to have the proper insulation, which is good. They've got to have an electric point for charging. But what's going to happen for somebody who lives in Ramsey on the top floor in King's Court? How are they going to manage? How are they going to? Yeah, we're going to have to stop it there because we've had our twenty minutes. You're joking. We have. We sailed through. Joking, Jim. Mr. Singer, I, I, was, want, I so, want to uh, talk about youth and everything. We'll have to. There's a many things, uh, and uh, there's time in between the 23rd of September, I'm sure, and now. But in the meantime, uh, Leonard Singer, standing for Ramsey uh, for the uh, general election. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you.